Good evening. Kidney stones are hard deposits made of minerals and salts that form inside your kidneys. Kidney stones may have many causes and can affect any part of your urinary tract from your kidneys to your bladder. Often kidney stones form when the urine becomes concentrated and allowing minerals to crystallize and stick together. To know more on kidney stones today we have with us Dr. V. Mohan Kumar, consultant urologist and robotic surgeon at Apollo Speciality Hospitals OMR. Good evening, doctor. Good evening, ma'am. What are kidney stones or sirenirika karkal? Uh, kidney stones are stones, uh, usually generically we call it as kidney stones, but kidney stones are stones which form anywhere in the kidney or it can come and drop in the ureter or it can even be seen in the bladder. It's a urinary tract uh, uh, stones. There are a lot of reasons for uh, formation of kidney stones. The most important reason, as you told uh, in the beginning, is that crystallization of the minerals, which leads to formation of the stones. What are the signs or symptoms of a kidney disorder? Yeah, the thing is, uh, it depends on where the stones are. Uh, the stones, if they are if they are in the kidneys, it may not cause an acute pain. It can have a dragging pain, and the patients, if the stone is infected, the patient can have fever and a very little uh, dragging kind of pain and a nagging pain. But if it is in the ureter, ureter is a small tube which connects the kidney and the bladder. If the stone drops to the ureter and it blocks. It can cause excruciating pain and severe nausea, vomiting, and pain in the flank region. And uh, the patient, if it, uh, if there is bilateral stone, the patient can even have complete drop in the urine output. And if there is any stone in the bladder which is dropped to the bladder, sometimes what can happen is the patient can have problem while passing urine. So these are the symptoms. The symptoms depend on which part of the urinary tract the stone is in. It depends on whether it's in the kidney or the ureter or the bladder. And who is at a risk? Who is at a major risk of developing kidney stones? Uh, it can it can affect anyone between. It, it can even affect the infant or toddler, and it can affect a person uh, even of 80, 90 years. Age is not a bar. Even sex is not a bar. The thing is, once a stone former, always can be a stone former again. The risk factors of stone are are lifestyle. The thing is, like a lot of things we take, as in the fast food, Coke, Pepsi, all these things can lead to stone formation. And people who don't drink water, adequate amount of water, especially in a hot and humid uh, condition like India, in a tropical country like India, where we are exposed to uh, you know, uh, extremes of temperature most of the year. So these things are very important. You need to take a lot of water. People who don't take water, people who have a lot of uh, fast lifestyle, all these people are prone for stone formation. And apart from that, there are certain metabolic abnormalities, there are certain hereditary reasons also being investigated for, these, for stone formation. And how do we prevent kidney stones, doctor? The prevention, the most important factor in preventing the stones is drink a lot of water. A lot of water in the sense like at least people think that, you know, I drink three liters of water, two liters of water, a lot is how much, how enough is enough. We say that, you know, the amount of water you drink is not that important. The amount of urine you pass is important. For example, if you take in summer season, for you to pass about three to 3.5 liters of urine, you need to consume at least four to 4.5 liters of water. But whereas in winter, for you to pass about three liters of urine, it's enough if you pass, if you consume 2.5 three liters of water. So the most important thing is the amount of urine you pass. So you'll have to titrate your uh, intake according to the climate. One thing, and the other thing is to avoid any uh, food substances which can lead to uh, stone formation. People feel like you know there is a common myth which say uh, people say that uh, calcium stones, calcium drinking a lot of milk, calcium, and all those stuff uh, le leads to formation of stones. No, it's just a myth. It's not correct. Calcium taken in a proper way, it actually prevents the stone. For example, what happens is if you take calcium along with the food, what uh, causes stone is the oxalate. If you take calcium along with the food, what happens is calcium prevents the oxalate absorption from the uh, intestine and the stomach. So what happens is if you take adequate amount of calcium with the food, you, it can even prevent the uh, stone formation. So moderate to normal amount of calcium with low sodium, and low protein diet is the ideal diet to prescribe for prevention of stones. Hello, doctor. I have a 7.8 millimeter kidney stone, uh, and uh, the kidney does the stone does not pass out uh, even after drinking plenty of water. What should I do? Seven point. It, it depends on uh, uh, where the uh, in the sense like. What is the modality which detected your stone? For example, if it's a CT scan, CT scan which is detected a 7.8 millimeter stone, it means that the size is accurate. And where in the kidney is the stone? For example, if it's in the lower calyx, 
8 millimeter stone, if it's not causing any pain or something like that, we can as well uh, leave it as such. But if it is a pelvic stone, if it is causing the obstruction or if it is painful, we can remove the stones. Uh, and it also depends, the method of uh, removal also depends on the hardness of the stone and location of the stone. If it is in the lower calyx, uh, it might be a flexible urethroscopy. If it is in the pelvis, we can even use a, a modality called ESWL where uh, the stones can be blasted without any surgery from outside. If you ask me whether 7.8 millimeter stone is definitely needs to be removed, no, not in all circumstances. For example, there are certain professions where even a four, five millimeter stones need to be removed. For example, if it's a pilot or a marine or a, a ship captain, we will never let any stones in, be inside the uh, kidney because their their stone co renal colic might be hazardous to lives of hundreds of people at any given point of time. If it's a normal profession, normal people like us, seven to eight, seven, eight millimeter stone, if it is not causing any trouble, we can just leave it as such. Hello, doctor. I had stones in one of my kidney four years back, which was four centimeters, and I haven't got any pain after that, after my treatment. Uh, even during the scan, it's not seen. Has it come out? I am doing good, no pain at the moment. Unfortunately, four centimeters, I feel like what you would have told is four millimeters. Four centimeter stone is a big stone. Uh, you have to anyways remove it. If it's a four millimeter stone, I think it would have passed by the ureter or sometimes four millimeter stones on sonography might not be uh, that accurate. Maybe even a small uh, one or two millimeter stones might have appeared like a four millimeter stones. It's better you get a sonography done. If you uh, repeat sonography done, if in case if you have a stone, then we can uh, do a CT and find out. You spoke to us about symptoms. Once I get any of those symptoms mentioned in uh, your talk recently, yeah. what would be my expectation out from my urologist's first appointment? So first appointment, what they do is like they will assess your symptoms. As a urologist, I would like to know your previous history, if there are any stone diseases or your family history. And most importantly, if you're in severe pain, I would first uh, like to get rid of your pain by giving some injections. And then I get a basic sonography done. A sonography and an X-ray will give you an uh, approximate uh, approximate measure of where the stone is, what exactly is the size of the stone, and whether it needs to be treated or not. If it's a small stone, we don't do a CT uh, usually. But a small stone which can be seen on sonography, and if it is, the symptoms are less and the infection is less, we'd give an antibiotic, we'd give a, a treatment for stone uh, expulsion, and then we will uh, review him later after a week. I've been having urination problem for over a year now. It starts with a weak stream and ends in a drip and it sometimes hurts. I go frequently day and night. I'm 23 male in Chennai. Should I visit a urologist? Please advise. Yeah, you should visit a urologist because young male with a urinary complaints of the flow, flow related complaints always should visit a urologist. You might have a stricture or you might have a small block in a urinary passage which needs to be evaluated. You cannot take things lightly because you are a uh, very young male with a, people with in this age should not have urinary complaints because this is not the age for prostate. If it's 60 and above, we can think in terms of prostate. 23 years is not the age for prostate. You might have some block or any a small stricture or something like that. We need to evaluate you. You, you should visit the urologist. What are the treatment options for kidney stones? Uh, there are a lot of treatment options, ma'am. It, it depends on where the kidney stones is, what type of what is the size of the stone and how hard is the stone. Uh, you can, uh, there are a lot of treatment options where the options available are ESWL. ESWL means extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy, in which we uh, we don't do any surgeries, we don't even do endoscopic surgery, we blast the stone from outside. The types of stone which are amenable to ESWL are uh, small stones, renal pelvic stones, and less than one centimeter stones. The stones are soft. If the stones are hard, if it is around one, between one to two centimeters, even though the stones are soft or hard, we have an instrument called as flexible urethroscopy here, where we don't have uh, do a cut or a small hole. Also, we go through the normal urinary passage, use a special scope which bends. Uh, we go inside the kidney and break the stone with a laser and remove the fragments. They might be really big stones, more than two centimeter, which are hard. These type of stones are not amenable to flexible urethroscopy. In these circumstances, we use a modality called as PCNL. You guys would have heard about it. PCNL is percutaneous nephrolithotomy, in which we make a small hole through the back of the kidney, which is the size of a, a, a pen. And we go through that and we use this nephroscope and break the stones, which laser or lithotripsy and remove all the fragments. So these are the modalities available. 
which is better doctor percutaneous nephrolithotomy or uh, flexible yeah scoping? it depends it depends on the nature of the stone the size of the stone and the site of the stone if it is a small stone i would always go uh, and do a flexible urethroscopy uh, if it is a big stone if i if a patient needs complete clearance in a single stage then pcnl will be better we offer all kinds of uh, stone removal modality treatments here in apollo chennai i have a stone in in my left ureter 5.2 mm how can i remove it by natural way or is surgery the only option in the report it is the left lower ureteric calculus with the result in mid back pressure changes yeah in this report they have given there is some back pressure changes it means that the stone is a bit obstructive even if it is 5 mm and it is in the lower ureter i wanted to know how many uh, for how many uh, days you have this stone for example if it is a stone a patient comes to you uh, with a stone history of only 2 week or 10 days 5.3 mm stones what how we divide is like in the lower ureter we divide stones as less than 4 mm 4 to 7 and greater than 7 mm if the stone is less than 4 mm the chance of it passing by itself with treatment is more than 80% your stone falls in the category of 4 to 7 mm 5 point stones 4 mm what we can do is like we can give you a chance of medical expulsive therapy which helps in removal of the stones we can give you the treatment for about 2 weeks or 3 weeks and we can repeat a sonography again the, you have a chance of uh, passing the stone simul uh, spontaneously for about 50 to 60 percent there is a 60 percent chance that you might not require surgery and the stone might pass itself but at the end of very important thing is at the end of 3 weeks you need to consult a urologist again because some stones might be in the ureter and might not give any symptoms so it's very important for you to take the medicines and visit a urologist after 3 weeks and do a repeat scan the repeat scan shows the stone at the same site then we might go for surgery why are we born with two kidneys if donating one doesn't affect our lifespan that's a uh, very good question uh, thing is uh, i don't have an answer to that question actually two kidneys are essential two kidneys put together will uh, uh, help you in sustaining the life for a longer time it doesn't mean that you know if you have if you uh, uh, donate a kidney your lifespan reduces it doesn't mean like that there are a lot of about uh, 1 to 2% of people in our population are born with uh, one kidney congenital so even that uh, even with one kidney if we uh, take care properly people uh, live their entire lifespan is surgery required for a 5 mm kidney stone uh, that's a good question too it depends on where the stone is if it's in the kidney 5 mm stones it does not require uh, uh, surgery if it is in the ureter if it's causing symptoms it requires surgery and it also depends on what profession the patient is in if it's as i told you previously if it's a pilot or a ship captain even 5 mm stones require surgeries if it's a uh, patient it's a sedentary lifestyle or any other profession then it does not require it depends on where the stone is is it symptomatic or not and based on the profession also hello doctor i'm 37 year old male suffering from left upper ureteric stone and right renal stone small size treatment as at the moment is tablet aquazide 25 of liquid casetide 15 ml twice tablet veltam 0.4 can i continue this do i need a second opinion yeah you can continue the medication the medication is given or correct but the thing is because it's an upper ureteric stone you might not you, what i advise is as i advised before you continue the tablets and get a scan after 3 to 4 weeks if the stone is still in the same location then you might require surgery what are the myths related to kidney stones doctor myths related to kidney stones as i told you before is like you know uh, if you uh, drink hard water the stone forms if you uh, drink a lot of calcium uh, the stone forms uh, the stones might uh, uh, if if a person if your partner has a stone you will get a stone all these things are myths Uh, i will burst one myth after the other first thing is calcium as i told you calcium taken in a proper way along with the meals actually is protective if it's taken in a normal quantity excess of anything is bad and the uh, uh, second uh, myth is like you know stone disease is not a infective disease so if you the reason for a person in a family for example people will say that doctor my father has a stone and i have a stone my wife also sometimes she she is also found to have a stone about one Five six millimeter is it infectious? No, it is not infectious. It says that you know the water you the food the diet you're taking and the amount of thing you are doing as a co- collective as a family is uh, is to be changed. For example, people uh, has to have to take a lot of water. 
they don't take a lot of water. If you live in a tropic climate, uh, for example, uh, stone places in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan uh, are called a stone belt. Stone belt in the sense like the place in which every household has got a stone, a person has got a stone. So it depends on the place. Uh, it's got to do with the stone, the area and the location. How do I remove my kidney stones naturally? This is a very common question asked by many of our viewers. See, kidney stones naturally, how, it depends on the size. If it is less than 5 millimeter, we advise you to take a lot of uh, water. And if it is a small, a soft stone, for example, soft stones are uric acid stones. These stones can uh, can get dissolved or the size can reduce if you have, if you take, if you alkalize your urine. So, for example, you can have a lot of alkalizers and uh, a syrup called potassium, magnesium, citrate. All these things can help in uh, reducing the, uh, in uh, dissolving the stones but as of now we don't have a definitive therapy which can say that yes if you take this 100 percent the stone will get dissolved no we don't have that hello doctor i'm a 36 year old male having pain in the lower left abdomen diagnosed with left mid ureteric calculus with mild hydronephrosis and hydroureter calculus sizes 60 6.6 millimeters right renal small uh, cortical cyst post void residual is at 92 ml kindly advice uh, the advice is like I, I wanted to know your age 36, 36 year years old. post void a single post void is not that significant the one which worries is the stone which is in the mid ureter is about 6.5 mm I need to know the duration of your uh, disease for example if you're already this scan you're already taken three weeks ago I would advise you to go and take a sonography again to see whether the stone is still there or not. If the stone is still there and if you have not taken any medications, you can visit a urologist and take the medications because the stone about 6.2 millimeters, it has got a 30-40% chance of coming out spontaneously. If you have not taken the medications, you take the medications. Even if the medication, after the medications, after you repeat sonography, if you feel that the stone is still there because it has come in the ureter and it has blocked it, I would advise you to visit a urologist and get the stone removed. What is the significance of robotics in urology, doctor? Uh, robotics in urology, as uh, robotics in urology, usually uh, we use robotic surgery in the, in, when it's oncologic in cancers. For example, in, uh, prostate cancer, kidney cancer, and uh, bladder cancer. All these type of cancers can be treated well with robotic surgery. Robotic surgery adds to the precision and it, uh, precision of the surgery and the recovery is amazing. It's where the recovery is very early. We at Apollo hospitals offer robotic surgery for all kinds of uh, urological oncological procedures. Even in stone diseases where there are certain stones, if it's a complete staghorn stone, there is one procedure called as anatrophic nephrolithotomy. We also have expertise in using robotics for those type of surgeries of uh, stone removal. But simple stones, robotic surgery is not necessary. But if it's a very complex staghorn stone, uh, which, which uh, has to be removed by open surgery, then robotic surgery is the uh, way to go. Can you tell us a little bit about the Department of Urology at Apollo Speciality Hospitals OMR? The Department of Urology at Apollo Speciality Hospitals OMR is equipped with uh, all kinds of uh, latest technology. We treat uh, patients right from pediatric age group till 80, 90 years. We have expertise in treating all types of stone diseases, even complex stones and laparoscopy. We even offer uh, robotic surgery and we do renal transplantations too. So it's a one-stop solution for all your urological problems. I am a 62 year old man. The scan report of mine shows uh, spelenomegaly, a cortical cyst with punctuate wall calcification in the upper pole of the right kidney, type 2 cyst. Right renal calculus, no radi dense ureteric calculus, multiple small calcific as well as non calcific uh, nodes in the right lumbar region. Kindly advise. So, splenomegaly, you need to visit a physician. For these cysts, you need to be on regular follow up. For the renal calculus, I think we need to uh, assess you uh, further. It is not an emergency because it's not a ureteric stone. I need to see, we need to see this uh, CT scan report and then we need to take uh, the things forward. For example, if the cyst is not coming in the way, we can either for the stone, if it is symptomatic, we can do a PCNL or a percutaneous nephrolithotomy. If there's a big cyst and all that the stone is small, then we can as well remove the stone by flexible ureteroscopy. Do women also develop stones in kidney? Doctor? Yeah, women also develop stones in the kidney. 
doesn't differentiate. The stone doesn't differentiate. And the treatment methodology, treatment is, the methodology same. is the same. Can you let us know about kidney stones in children? Uh, children, there are a lot of reasons of, for developing kidney stones in children. It might be hereditary. There might be a lot of metabolic reasons for renal tubular acidosis. Patients can also develop in uh, stones in children. Treating a kidney stone in children is very, very tricky because a lot of instruments uh, are developed only for treating stones for adults. Here in Apollo Hospital Zoema, we have special instruments with which we can treat the kidney stones even in children. We have miniaturized instruments and small flexible scopies with which we can go and treat the uh, stones in the children. Uh, children treating the stone is very important because it's just not enough if we treat the stone. We need to find out the root cause. Because in children, if you just treat the stone, what happens is the stones might form again and again. So we need to assess the root cause and we need to do the evaluation completely. We need to for, for find the metabolic reasons for the stone and treat the root cause to prevent the formation of stone. Hello, doctor. I want to know, does Silofast 8MG help dissolve kidney stones of 5 millimeter in kidney ureter junction? No. See, the thing is, the, I, uh, this is a good question. The, probably the doctor who would have given this, it's an, Silofast is an alpha blocker. What, why they would have given is like, uh, they would have given this to aid in the expulsion of stone. These drugs, alpha blockers, don't help in dissolving the stone. What it does is it just opens up the passage and loosens the urethrovesical junction so that the stone will pass freely without causing a pain. It will aid in the expulsion of the stone, not in dissolving the stone. Can you tell us about one of your challenging cases, Dr. Uh, one case, what we had was like a, a, a patient uh, very recently uh, we operated. Uh, he was operated outside and uh, uh, he's a, a patient with a horseshoe key. Horseshoe kidney, and there was a stone in the horseshoe kidney. It was attempted surgery outside, and the surgery was not possible. When he had come to us, what we did was like we did a CT scan and we assessed it, and uh, somebody has advised him open surgery. But what we did was like we did a simple uh, flexible urethroscopy without any scar, without any cuts. We completely cleared the stone in a single sitting and sent him home in a couple of days. And he was very happy because he has been uh, uh, visiting doctors lot of doctors with this stone for nearly a year and a half. A lot of people were reluctant to take the case, but we took this as a challenge and we operated and we uh, sent him home in a, uh, in a couple of days. That was a very satisfying experience. Hello, doctor. My kidney measures 106 into 59 millimeters. There is a mild dilation of the right pelvic system with a dilated right upper two-third ureter with small right mid ureteric calculus which measures six into six millimeters in size. What does this indicate? Is it something serious? Can it be treated? It is not serious, but it is a thing which needs uh, some consideration. It, because the stone is there in the ureter and it is causing some obstruction, I think this is the sonography. You need to do a CT scan to know the exact size of the stone and the, uh, the nature of the stone. Since the stone is in the mid ureter, I don't know from, from how long you've been having the stone. If it has been for more than uh, three to four weeks, I better advise you to go for a CT scan and visit a urologist. There's no point in waiting for more than three, four weeks. Uh, we can do a simple ureteroscopic procedure and make you stone free. It has to be treated. It is not an emergency, but it has to be given consideration and you need to visit a urologist and get it treated. What happens when a kidney disorder goes unnoticed or undiagnosed? Because kidney stones, we have had patients uh, who have bilateral stones and what they do is like, because people see, think that, you know, only if you have symptoms, you should visit a doctor. No. For example, if it's a, even if it's a big stone, sometimes people might not have symptoms. So they don't uh, go and get, a, get it treated by the urologist. The stones stay there. Sometimes the stones might come and block the ureter and the, stone, the kidney can get infected. We have seen patients who have a completely asymptomatic stones and the kidney complete, uh, the kidney going into complete failure and even requiring a kidney removal. So this is how bad uh, untreated stone can turn out to be for the patient. How are kidney stones related to renal colic, doctor? Renal colic is the sense like it is the pain which the patient suffers. That is colic. Uh, kidney stones, if it is a big stone, it can stretch the kidney capsule and cause pain. If the stone is, if the stone, if it's a small stone comes and if it blocks the ureter, then also you can the patient can have pain. Hello, doctor. I'm a 42 year old male. During urination, I have very heavy pain in the urethra every time. This is almost there for the last 10 years. But today I saw some blood drops in the urine. 
is it serious because i am really scared please advise uh, this is not related to stone disease probably uh, you might need to visit a urologist and get a uh, evaluation done for example if the 42 years you might have a, a stricture or any small stone or uh, any other problem so we need to evaluate you in terms of sonography and a urophotometry and assess your symptoms thoroughly we need to you need to visit us you need to visit a urologist you've spoken about the measures to prevent uh, a kidney disorder could you elaborate a little bit about it uh, exactly see science has grown uh, over the last uh, few decades but all the growth is in terms of only how to treat the already formed stones science is still in infant stage when it comes to prevent uh, stone disease we have done a lot of uh, research in india and we are still doing a lot of research in preventing the stone diseases the uh, what we have found out is like you know people who uh, the most important thing for prevention of stone is like you drink a lot of water one important thing and you avoid there are certain foods which you can avoid which contains uh, which results in stone formation there are certain simple measures you can take to uh, you know to drink a lot of water to uh, drink uh, citrus uh, juices for example lemon juice orange juice all these things will uh, prevent uh, formation of stone so there are very very simple basic measures which you can take to prevent the stones what are the foods that should be avoided and what are the foods that should be encouraged exactly. to avoid it depends on what type of stones you have most of the stones uh will form in an acidic environment urine acidic environment you need to alkalize your urine you, you need to alkalize your urine and there are certain stones which uh, form when you have oxalate containing foods oxalate containing foods in the sense like for example tomato alar uh, nuts uh, dark chocolate coke pepsi and all those stuff there are lot, more, almost all the foods contain oxalate if i say that you avoid oxalate containing foods A lot of people come and say that you know, doctor, if I went and saw in the net, almost all the food contains oxalate. So you, you, I cannot live with only drinking water. No, what we mean is like nothing like that. What we say is like avoid of food which are which contain oxalate to a larger extent. For example, spinach. You, for example, uh, tomato, palak, and all those uh, stuff. You can take citrate containing uh, juices. For example, uh, lemon juice, orange juice. All these things contain citrate. which will help in reducing the stone formation but this is the general advice we give but it all depends on what are the stones there are lots of different type of stones so for example if a patient brings a stone to us we can analyze the stone the stone already passed we can analyze the stone and we have facility to even analyze his urine and see what are the salts the patient excretes in the urine and if based on the amount of uh, uh, magnesium citrate uric acid oxalate and all these things in the urine we we formulate a diet for the patient and we make sure that uh, if the patient follows a certain diet his chances of forming the stone reduces to a great extent it can be tailored it can be individualized according to the patient needs speaking of foods there is a theory which says that you're supposed to avoid the seeds in the fruits and vegetables <laughs> is it true no no it's not true it's especially not true. in tomatoes guava no, it's just the myth no 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 Thank you very much doctor that was really an informative session thank you lot for appointments with dr mohan kumar consultant urologist and robotic surgeon at apollo specialty hospitals omr please reach out to 72990999985 i repeat 72990999985 thank you doctor thank you viewers thank you